Greetings gentlemen and ladies, I am the Old School Game Snub, and in today's video we are taking a look at a variation of my previous trolly, cold, invincible, nearly unkillable sorceress. This one is actually uh, not trolly, this one is actually extremely viable and also still extremely tanky. Uh, she's a blizzard sorceress who is extremely difficult to kill, this would be a very good build in a hardcore play. So let me show you around this build a little bit and what she can do and then I'll show you how she's put together. All right. Here we see her up against some explodey boys. She's even got an amplified damage on her. I thought that was kind of a funny sequence. Boom, 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 boom. The Doom Knight is a notorious hard hitter. Uh, and I'm not saying that you'd want to just stand there and uh, tank it from a whole group of them and whilst being casted on uh, from the side. But the fact that you have this much time to make a decision and get out of the way, well, that's a good thing. <laughs> Next, we see her under an absolute assault from all sides. Melee attacks, dart attacks. We got... We got projectiles flying from left, right, and center, and yeah, no, just kind of hanging out and enjoying the fireworks. Taking another notch here with a Might Aura active, still just hanging out, still just enjoying the fireworks, and boy, that's a lot of fireworks. That's a pretty lightworks show, it really is. This character is actually happy to see uh, Dark Souls, and that is because their lightning attack actually heals her. Yep, she can just hang out in that lightning storm all day long. And this is also true of the council. Now, some of you didn't believe in my previous video that we were in hell difficulty, so I'm popping up my map. As you can see, yes, this is hell difficulty. Those hydras heal her so quickly. Fire damage, lightning damage, both heal her. Here we are just sitting around in the center of a bunch of council members. These guys are tough and dangerous, but nope, not for this character. She's even got an amplified damage on her. That is just absolutely no problem at all. Now keep in mind you wouldn't want to do this if you were actually playing hardcore um, because you can occasionally get special mods on these monsters that spawn that can potentially take her down, but oftentimes uh, this is the experience that you will have. For this character, most instances of fire and lightning are a welcome sight because hey, that is just free healing all day long. And once again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend just standing there and letting Death Lords unload on you. But hey, if you need some time to make some decisions, the toughness of this character gives you a lot of room to make mistakes. Anyway, tough is one thing, but like I say, this is a viable Blizzard character with a very strong Blizzard spell, so let's take out some monsters and I'll show you a little bit about her clear speed. Here we have the, uh, the third wave of Bale's minions, the Council, Bartuck the Bloody, and Friends. And I'm going to stand in the worst possible place for most characters to be standing right in the center of things. Like I say, just to demonstrate how tough this character is, how good she is at clearing monsters. Generally speaking, it's not a good idea to stand right in the middle of the minions of destruction, but hey, in this case, I think we're going to be just fine. All just melting, melting to her frozy blizzard, frosty, frosty coolness. Okay, let's look at this build and also keep in mind that even though she is very tough and tanky against a lot of types of damage, uh, she is vulnerable to magic damage. Also, the explosions from the undead Stygian dolls can be uh, somewhat uh, problematic, so keep that in mind if you actually do play hardcore with this character. Okay, let's look at how this a little lady is put together. Um, her blizzard is maxed out. We have 20 hard points into blizzard, 20 hard points into glacial spike which is of course a synergy. Ice Blast is also a synergy, so we have 20 points into that. These are also nice to mix into your blizzard, uh, your blizzard rotation. And Ice Bolt also has 20, so we've got a maxed out blizzard and we have 10 points into Cold Mastery. Actually, I think we have 11. We have 11 points into Cold Mastery. Um, this doesn't have to be maximum, but you know, adding some points to that helps to break through Cold Immunes. Not Cold Immunes, but Cold Resistant Monsters, I guess I should say. Um, let's look over to the fire tree where we have one hard point into warmth just to help with mana regeneration, one into static field, and one into teleport. Now you can decide what you like better for yourself. I have put 10 hard points into shiver armor and that is just to bring her defense up. That reduces a lot of melee hits and actually when we combine that with our mercenary's defiance aura, which we'll talk about in a minute, her armor gets up really high, around 13,000, making it very difficult to actually hit her. That is one of her layers of defense. For her gear, we are using Wizard Spike. That is to help get our resistances up to maximum. If you have a bunch of charms to supplement Wizard Spike and you want some more damage, you could possibly swap that out or uh, for some plus three uh, skills sorceress wand. Um, we have the Crown of Ages. That is for the damage reduction and also for the resistance. Also for the armor, or so rather the defense, which I always call armor. 
Um, we also are using Storm Shield, again, for the big defense and also for the uh, 35 to, what was it, 30 or 35 to damage reduction? 35 to damage reduction. So when we combine our 35 damage reduction here with our Crown of Ages, which gives us an additional 15% damage reduction, that is physical damage reduction, we hit the cap of 50 uh, damage reduction. So any physical damage that gets through our defense, uh, is reduced by 50% and that is nice. To help this along, we are also socketing soul runes into our guardian uh, angel, uh, into our crown of ages, uh, into our shield, and also into our guardian angel. This gives us damage reduced by a flat 28. So any of the damage that is already reduced by 50% that gets through is reduced by an additional 28. So, so many light hits are reduced by a lot. This helps with uh, smaller hits that come more quickly and more frequently. For our armor piece, the Guardian Angel, mainly for its plus 15 to all uh, po uh, poison, cold, lightning, and fire resistances to all the different uh, resistances, which allows us to get up to nearly maximum, uh, well, it allows us to get up to 90, and then we're using some other gear to get to 95, 95 lightning and fire. Actually, for that, we are using the Inferno Stride Boots, which give us an additional plus 10 to fire resist, and we are also using Thunder God's Vigor, which gives us an additional plus 10 to lightning resist. Now in addition to giving us plus 10 to lightning resist, the reason that dark souls and lightning attack damages heal us is because of our 20 lightning absorbed. Since we have 95 to lightning resist, that 20 to absorb is enough to actually equate to healing. You can see that in example here. As for her rings, Raven Frost is kind of nice if you don't want to be frozen. It also helps with some cold absorb, which helps to heal you from cold attacks and reduce cold damage even more. Um, you can also use Nature's Peace. I like Nature's Peace because, well, it slain monsters rest in peace, basically, so you can do Nilhawk's Temple more easily, and also this additional 11 damage reduce gets our total damage reduction up to 39, which is actually enough to prevent the bugged Tomb Vipers from insta-killing you. So that's handy if you want to run Nilahot Thox. I have also thrown on some Mage Fist Gauntlets. This is to help achieve that faster cast rate breakpoint. Combine that with Wizard Spike with 50% faster cast rate, and we hit 70%, which breaks that 63% faster cast rate point, which helps with your Ice Blast and your Glacial Spike. Additionally, we have the Rising Sun Amulet, and this is mainly for that 72 to Fire Absorb. This basically is what makes most fire hits heal her. That's a nice thing. In addition to this, the Guardian Angel and Storm Shield are very nice for their nice high chance to block and also the faster block rate increased chance of blocking from Guardian Angel. We have put her uh, put her dexterity up to achieve about a 65% chance to block, actually a little bit more even, about 74 in this case. So you can raise your dexterity up to around 160, 170. I'm not exactly sure the exact number for all different monsters in Hell Difficulty, but you know, once you get 65-70% chance to block, even more in, in this case, that is good. That is a part of this build because blocking reduces a lot of damage. So we dodge a lot of damage with our defense, and then what gets through, we block, and then what is elemental, we reduce, and then what is the remainder, we absorb and heal. So that is kind of where this character gets all of her survivability from. We have enough strength to wear her gear. Basically, the Guardian Angel is the highest strength piece at 196. The Storm Shield helps out with that, with that plus 30 to strength, so you only need to really raise it up to, what is it, 121 base. There we go. Uh, the rest goes into vitality. On her offhand, I have a heart, uh, sorry, a call to arms, and uh, that is just basically to get her health up a little bit more, her mana up a little bit more. For charms, it is basically whatever you want to get your resistances up to their tippy top, uh, and also, yeah, whatever you want, skill or charms, life charms, mana charms, health charms, whatever you kind of want in there, whatever balance you like. That is basically the build, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and for our mercenary, we have Undariel's Visage, we have the Reaper's Toll, we have Treachery, nice fast attacks, lots of life leech. This really helps our mercenary to stay alive. We have also given him the Defiance Aura, <clears throat> and that is to get our defense up to 13,000 to make us even more difficult to hit by melee attacks. Okay, so let's do a run of the Chaos Sanctuary so you can really see this character in action. Check out her clear speed, check out her, you know, toughness, tank ability, survivability, as it were. Um, yeah, uh, the, if, there, if there is one thing that this character kind of suffers from, and that is her mana supply. So you might actually consider giving your mercenary the insight rune word. 
Um, that makes him kind of less tough, less tanky than the Reaper's Toll, which is really nice because you combine Reaper's Toll with Andariel's Visage and you get like 25% 20, uh, life leech, I think, something like that, give or take. Um, but the uh, but that mana, mana regen is really, really nice. Um, I wouldn't usually play as, you know, up close and personal in the face of demons if I was actually trying not to die, but I'm kind of kind of demonstrating a little bit here more about uh, just like the toughness and tankability of this character. Like I say, I probably wouldn't stand in harm's way here with a with a amplified damage on. But like I say, we're just we're just doing some demonstration here as to what you what you can get away with. Um, the magic attack. The magic attack is what she does not have resistance to, so you have to watch out for those. Those can come through all of her defenses and uh, do uh, quite a bit of damage. So just something to be aware of. Magic, like I say, like you can see those hits coming through. Those are probably from magic hits or magic magic damage type. Um, so watch out for those. <clears throat> for the most part, you don't see too much magic damage. The snakes have it. Uh, some of these knights have it. Um, Oblivion Knights, I forget which ones, I forget which ones they have, they all look the same to me, I don't know. Um, there we go, where's Lord Decease, there we go, he's the cold enchanted guy that my mercenary has to do the job for. Uh, we're not with Emilio here today, with his, we're with his pal Fazel, I hope Fazel is up to the challenge. Alright, boy this is a fast, fast moving Lord Decease. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, buddy. <laughs> oh, come on. Boy, he's really being stubborn here. Was that it? No, he's he's kind of, kind of weirdly glitching out there. Okay, I think that was it. I think that was everything. It all got nice and quiet in the Chaos Sanctuary, so I think that was it. <laughs> all right. We're going to give Diablo a bit of a shot here, just so I can demonstrate uh, the resistance of this character some, to some of Diablo's attacks. Like I say, fire damage, basically not a problem. That Rising Sun amulet, so, so good. Um, his melee attacks will come through, but that fire, no problem. Those little bursty, bursty flames. Um, I don't know what that is. I don't see that one too often. Maybe it's a magic hit, but yeah, melee, he does a job. Uh, fire, come on, do your do your little lightning thing there, buddy. We gotta see lightning, and then we're gonna finish you off. There we go. Here's the lightning. No problem. No damage taken. So that's kind of fun. All right. Anyway, let's finish Diablo off. I guess we have static field here, and then a little blizzard, and then a little ice bolt, and then a little blizzard, and then a little ice bolt, and some super awesome thing to finish the stream or the stream the video. No, we have a we have a Grimhelm. No, we have nothing. Okay, hey, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. A very big thank you to my subscribers. Uh, you guys are rock stars. I appreciate the support. And also thank you for my viewers. Thank you for watching. Check out the rest of my channel for more Diablo videos. Also check out my new channel linked in the description, Game Snob Unchained, where I am covering Gods Unchained, sort of a Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering-like card game.